Hey guys, welcome to my channel iCode. I am Pallav and today we are going to see that how can we inspect and debug web views in our iOS applications. If you are watching my video for the first time, let me tell you that I upload videos related to iOS programming every Sunday on this channel and few weeks back I uploaded a similar video on debugging. It was about improving the debugging skills. I discussed different ways of debugging in that video and if you want to have a look, here would be the link. In today's video, we will see everything related to the debugging of the web views, be it web view elements, monitoring of the network calls, looking at the response headers, request headers, the URL that is being hit, the response that is being received, the console and everything else. So let's dive in. So in order to learn the debugging of the web views in the iOS applications, the first thing that we need is an application having web view in it. And for it, Here's a small piece of code, it is having nothing much, it's just a view controller and I have imported webkit here. I have confirmed to this wkui delegate and in the view did load, I'm just making a URL request using this URL. This is the URL of my portfolio, uh, the domain has expired, but anyway, it's enough for us to learn the debugging thing. And I'm just loading the web view. This is the load view method and it is because I'm confirming to this protocol. So herein, I'm just assigning the web view to our set dot view and let's give it a run to see how it looks and, and then we'll look at the debugging part. So let me just run it and I'm running it on the actual device, not on the simulator. So let's bring it in the view here. Um, this is how it looks. So it's not updated. It's quite old, but yeah, enough for us to look at the debugging things. Now, in order to debug this, the first thing that we need to do is enable the develop options in our Safari browser. So in my Safari, I'm already having this develop menu here, but in case you are not having it, you can enable it through the preferences. So if I open the preferences, you can do that using command comma or from here, preferences. And here there's this small checkbox which says show develop menu in menu bar. So if you toggle it, this, the develop option goes from there. I'll just keep it checked because we want the developer options. And now in the developer options, if you go here, you will find your device that is connected and then you can see enable web inspector on the device. Now this is because the web inspector has not been enabled on your iPhone on which your application is running and you want to debug. So for that, let's first enable the web inspector options on our device. So you can do that by going into the settings application in the settings go to the safari safari where's it there it is safari and down in the advanced options you will find this option for web inspector so just toggle the switch and then you can check into your safari browser that these options now are now enabled so now let's see that how we can use it how we can inspect the web views and debug it. So I just run it once. And now let's go to Safari, develop our iPhone. And this is the web page that is loaded. And if you see, if I show this phone here and maybe I'll have to split the windows slightly. So if you see that when I hover at this option, our web view is getting highlighted. So this confirms that this is the page that, that we are looking for that we, that we need to debug. So just click on it and the web inspector will open something like this. And now there are a bunch of options through which we can play around. So, I mean, if you are a little bit comfortable with the web app development or debugging of the web applications, then it will be quite, you know, similar for you. But if not, not to worry, I'll show you everything that can be done from here and it will be of great use. So the first thing that we can do is we can click on this elements tab and then the entire hierarchy of our web application will be here. So let me just show this here. You can see. So every element in the body of our web page, we can highlight it, we can inspect it, its frame, its properties and everything else. So this is something of great use when we want to debug some UI issue, if something is breaking, and you would be thinking that why would you need to debug a web view? I mean, as an as developer, we always prefer for having the native UIs, the native views. And we are generally reluctant for embedding the web views. 
but at times it's business call and the product guys ask you to put the web view in your application and there are very valid reasons for that so if the adoption rate is considered or the scalability is considered or maybe the flexibility on those parts when you are uh, when your ui is changing very frequently and the adoption of your application the new version cannot happen that that quickly generally product goes for the web view approach and and i think that it's fine in certain scenarios if it is the requirement of the business so well in that case is if some issue occurs in your web view let's say if ui is breaking or if something else is going on that which url is being hit what are the request headers that are being passed if you are not able to identify it or maybe if the web front end guys if they ask for your help that if you guys can share that what url is being hit so i think that we should be able to help those guys or even we should be having the knowledge that what's going in our application what url is being hit by our web view and everything else so that's where this web inspector is of great use so this is just a thing i mean this is not of much use uh, the inspecting of the view hierarchy here but there are a bunch of other things that we'll see so the one thing that you can do is that you can download this entire web archive so if you click here you will get the option of downloading the web archive and if i just give it some name say debug web view just add it and then you can open this page in the safari browser and this is how it will look so this is the web page that we are loading in our ios application and we can view the entire web page the entire web archive of it by just downloading it from there so at times this is of use and the next thing that we can do is we can use this console so if you want to view the logs if you want to print the values of some variables you can actually use this console now uh, if you think that what what values can be printed here so for that let's come to this console in a moment and before that let's view this source so using this source you can actually view the source code of your web application of this entire web page and can do a lot so let me just give you an idea here so let's say that if i go for this these scripts are being used by this web page so if i go for this helper script here and because i developed that web page so i know that which function is doing what and i put a debugger a breakpoint here in the send message so this send message method is called when someone tries to send a message so for that let me just go to this contact and here there's this form so if i click on this send message without filling any of these fields there's this validation check so as soon as i'll click on the send message button this function send message will be called and then we can debug it so if i click on this send message you see that this breakpoint is hit and now we can inspect the values of the elements so what i was discussing about the console we can actually use it here so let's say if i go here and try to print this value in the console i'm getting as it as empty and now if i just play it i just remove this breakpoint and enter some value so let's say hello and now if i click on send message again our control is stuck at this breakpoint and again i can do the same thing and we see pala here so this way you can view the entire source code of the web page the scripts the variables you can debug the other thing that you can do is you can look at the assets that are being used provided that those are static and those are not being fetched from the servers so in my case let's say this slack image or maybe this sign in with apple so i'm using these images in this uh, block section so i'm using these images here and these are the static images so that's why i'm getting them here now if i click on any of these images that says slack and the resource i'll get the full url path of this asset and if i copy this and just give it a run in the browser i'll get that image so that way you can actually look at the assets that is being used in your web page now let's look at something more useful this network tab so this network tab will tell us about all the network calls that are being made by this web page so if i click on all it will show everything but just for filtering just for getting our document i'll click on this document tab 
and here in the preview that's our document and now let's see that what network calls have been made so for that i'll just go on the top here and there's an option for downloading my cv so if i click here you see that this network call was made and if i click here i can actually look at the summary the request the response so this was the url which was hit for downloading the resume document handler slash download resume this is the request this is the response i mean request headers and the response if some cookies are being used we can inspect them through this cookies tab and the size timing security and everything else can be inspected as well if your web application is storing something locally you can view it using this storage tab and the other graphics animation the layers everything else can also be seen and now you see that the animations that are happening i can even inspect them so this is the fading up animation that is happening and it is happening because of this line so we can go here so if you are a web front-end developer this is of great use but even if you are not if you are an iOS application developer even then i would recommend this tool this is very useful especially in monitoring the network calls looking at the request response headers parameters and other things and then you can view at the layers just like we view our ui hierarchy index code and one thing that we can do is we can actually audit our web page so it is just similar to the running of the test cases what we do for iOS application so if i start here actually the audit will start and i'll get the results that where my web page is having issues i can determine it so again this audit tab is very useful and i understand that there are tools like charles which we use to monitor the the network tabs but what i would say that this web inspector is way more powerful than using charles because in charles you can only monitor the network calls and other stuff but here you can actually inspect the view hierarchy the web view elements you can look at the source code the console the network calls obviously and the other storage or cookies that are being used by the web page and a lot so next time when you get stuck with some issue in which a web view is involved and you think that how can i debug this web view because that is not in my control this has been developed by some other team some other web front end guys you can actually help them in debugging or you can debug it yourself so just give it a try that's pretty much for this video a new video comes out every sunday so stay tuned let's write better code together happy coding and stay safe